How's it going, you guys? So for this video, we're going to go over the problem unique paths. This is a problem asked at both Microsoft and Uber, and it involves using dynamic programming. So the description says a robot is located at the top left corner of an M by N grid marked start in the diagram below. The robot can only move either down or right at any point in time. The robot is trying to reach the bottom right corner of the grid marked finish in the diagram below. How many possible unique paths are there? So the only inputs that were given for this problem are two integers and they represent the size of our grid. And so our robot will always start at the top left, which will be at the indices zero, zero. And then our finish will always be at the bottom right. And that will be at the number of columns that we have minus one and the number of rows that we have minus one. So let's jump over to the whiteboard and I'll go over some examples. So in this first example on the left side, we have a grid where we have two rows and three columns. And so we need to determine how many paths we can take for the robot R to reach the star, which is our finish. And that is in the bottom right. So one path is we could go right, right, and then down. Or we could go right, down, right, or we could go down, right, right again. And so that would give us a total of three unique paths. But we need to use dynamic programming in order to determine this three value by the time we reach the bottom right of our corner. So let's break this down because all dynamic programming is, is you're building calculations off of previous calculations. So to get to the right box right here, right? Because the robot can only move down or right. This would take one move, right? Or if the robot went down, this would also be uh, one move. Now, if we're looking at this box right here, technically there could be a path coming from below here or it could come from this direction. So all we have to do to determine at every index how, how many unique paths there are up to that point is we just look above us and to the left of us. So above us, we have one unique path. And then to the left of us, we have one unique path. So we just sum them up. So this box would just be one plus one. So that's two because we have one path going right here and one path going right here. And then we're, let's say we look at this box up here. Above us, there's nothing. But to the right of us, we have a one. So there's only one unique path to get to this box right here, right? Because above us, that's just zero. So this would just be one plus zero, and that's one unique path. So it makes sense because if this one unique path at this box, that would be right here. You can't get to this box in any other path. And same thing with this box right here. We can only get to this box from our robot and then going right. And then likewise, this would be our only path to get to this box. And then for this box right here, where we have a sum of two, we could go this way or we could go this way. So you're just always looking above you and to the left of you. And so finally, we have our bottom right corner and we just do the sum. So one, we look above us and then two to the left of us. So that would be three. So that's where we get that number three from. So essentially we will iterate over an M by N matrix, keeping track of all of these calculations. And by the end of iteration, all we have to do is check our bottom right value, and that will be the number we return from our function. So let's switch over to this other example. So for this robot to get to this position right here, it would have to go right, and there's only one unique path it can go to get to this box. And then likewise, for this box, above us, we don't have anything, and but to the left of us, we do. So we would do one plus zero. 
So that means we have one unique path to get here. Same thing from here, we do one plus zero. So this would be one. And now right here, the robot can go down. And so that's just one because there's no other path that can get to this box other than just going down. And now right here, we're gonna look above us to look to the left of us. So this would be one plus one. So that would be two unique paths. So that comes from right here and then right here, right? And now on this path, we look above us, that's one, plus to the left of us, that's two. We have three unique paths. So this comes from this path, this path, and then this path, right? And then we look above us here to the left, we do one plus three, and that's four. I think you guys get the picture. So right here, we look above us to the left of us, that would be a sum of one. Right here, sum two plus one, that's three. Three plus three is six. Four plus six is 10. And so by the end of iteration, 10 would be our final answer. So essentially our recurrence relation is if we were to have our current position be called i j, then all that means is we need to look up dp of i minus one at index j plus dp of i at j minus one. So the j minus one will handle the case to look left and then the i minus one will handle the case to look up and then we just sum them up. So next I'm gonna jump over to the code and I'll show you guys how to implement it. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create an integer array. So let's create an integer array called dp and let's initialize it with m and n. And now we need to loop over m and n, so all of our grid. And now this is where we need to check whether we are at a border or not. Because if you remember, let's go back to the whiteboard. If we are anywhere on the perimeter right here, so the top or the left, we can see that all these values are just ones, right? Because there's only one unique path to, to get to each of these boxes since the robot can only move right or down. So we can say if i is equal to zero or j is equal to zero, then we need to set this current index to one, right? If this is not true, this is where we use that recurrence relation. So we'll say dp of i j is equal to dp i minus one j plus dp of i j minus one. So we're checking above us and to the left and we're just summing it. And then finally, we're going to return the bottom right corner. So that would be dp of m minus one, n minus one. So let's make sure that this works. And there we go. So next I'll go over the time and space complexity. The time complexity is going to be m times n, because we have to iterate over all of our grid and touch every element a single time. Our space complexity is also m times n. On line 10, we have to initialize this 2D DP array uh, containing m times n elements. So that's it for this video, guys. I plan to do a lot more dynamic programming videos. I know it's a highly requested topic. Make sure to subscribe for future videos. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.